Hi, this is Victor Batista, and I'm a pre-sales engineer with UiPath, and today we're going to be seeing how we can set up the document understanding framework inside of UiPath Studio. So just to preface, this video will be explaining how to set up document understanding framework inside of a studio. Basically, how do we get all the different sort of activities aligned so that we can actually start having documents processing by? So this is going to be the first part of two videos. This one is going to be specifically about setting up those activities. And the second one will be about how to use different sort of extractors inside of uh, your path studio. So let's go ahead and first create a chart, a uh, flow chart. And in here, just going to look for one the flow chart and uh, create it. Actually, I had one already, but um, let's just use the, the one I created. And you can also name it any way you want. Now we're going to go ahead and install the Intelligent OCR package. Make sure that for this case, you have the include pre-release. If you're installing this before our April 20.04 release. So we're going to go ahead and install both. Uh, actually, let's do ahead. Go ahead and do OmniPage OCR, which is a, a new OCR that comes inside of UiPath Studio and Bot. And then we're going to go ahead and install the Intelligent OCR activities. So these are going to be two packages that we're going to be installing. The Intelligent OCR is going to be for the Document Understanding Framework, and the Omni page is going to be for the OCR engine that we're going to be using inside of the Document Understanding Framework. And just to give you an idea, you can use any sort of engine. It can be the Microsoft, it can be Avi, it can be Google, it can be an internal OCR that you have. But uh, what, what we're going to have and do inside of the Document Understanding Framework is to give you the flexibility to use whatever you want for your specific need. And that can change according to languages or perhaps the accuracy and the quality of your characters and, and forms or documents. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and look for low taxonomy. And this is just to say we're going, we're going to have a lot of document types. And once we load the taxonomy, that's going to tell the bot, hey, these are all the different document types that I'm going to be using in the future. After that, we go ahead and put the uh, digitizing document, and this is where our engine is going to go. So the first thing is that uh, we're going to have an output of uh, the DOM, which is a document object model, and also the text coming out of that, as well as the document path. And the document path can come from a lot of different places. It can come from a loop. It can come for from just uh, user input, etc., you really determine uh, how how the document path comes in. But we're just enabling the variables. The next thing that we have to enable inside our template or our process is to actually use an OCR engine. And we have several OCR engines that come with UiPath and no added extra cost like Microsoft OmniPage and Tesseract. In this case, we're going to use the OmniPage OCR, which we just installed. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and drop the classified document scope. And what we're going to do here is basically enable the classification of documents. The first thing we put in there is the document path. And the second thing that we're going to do is actually uh, create a JSON file just to be able to store all the keywords that by which we are able to select and classify several document types. So in this case, I just copy the file, and now I'm going to go ahead and uh, just empty it up just to make sure that we have an, a clean sheet from where the bot can start learning and also uh, classifying documents. Now that that's ready, I can go back to my studio and actually just say, hey, this is going to be the path of the keyword classifier. I'm going to put it, I put it in the same place as a taxonomy. You can put it in a different place, but that's just fine. After we have that complete, what we're going to do is actually configure a classifier. But if you realize it's giving me an error because you have to define the different types of documents that you will be working with. And usually this is one of the first few steps, but I just want you to conceptually understand the flow of the document understanding framework in terms of the design. So in here, to create a document type, first we need to create a group, and that can be a super group of where your document types are going to be. You can think of a group as, for example, finance uh, department or HR, HR department, engineering department, 
and a category will be a subgroup of those apartments or any other category or hierarchy that you want. Following that, we create the new name for a document, we add a field, we save that, and then we go ahead and close it. The reason I'm just adding one field is just to set this up. But of course, you can delete that field going forward, and you can also add other different document types. I added just one keyword, and then I'm gonna go ahead and configure classifier and enable that particular document. So the next step is just going to be, hey, did my classifier find one of the different documents that we were looking for? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, according to whether or not you have trained that classifier to understand and be able to classify a specific document. So we're just saying, does it have any classification? If it does, great, we're gonna extract something. If it doesn't, what we're gonna do is just basically put it through the validation station so that the extraction trainer can learn from it. We're gonna go ahead and look for the data extraction scope, drag and drop that into there. And I'm also going to put other scopes that we're going to use just so we can get this, uh, all of this working a lot faster. So I put in there the data extraction scope and the other one that I I'm going to put is actually the validation station, which is here, right? Yep, right here, which is the next step. And that's the one that's going to allow the user to validate it. After that, we're gonna have the export uh, extraction results. We're also gonna have the train classifier scope in order to train the classifier. And I'm just going to connect this here. Uh, actually, I'm gonna move this a little bit. It's just uh, a little bit out of, out of region in here. Anyway, the the other thing that I want to do as well, and let's this looks better. This is usually how I put it. The next thing that I want we want to do is actually uh, also assign a way to know when we actually need to give the human validation station in order to train the classifier. So I'm going to just put it in there for the meantime. And in here we're gonna add first the classification and we're going to put between parentheses zero because we're just going to take the first object then we're going to put dumb for the document uh, object model and for the path is a document and again i'm just uh, starting to type and then the rest comes up but this is all fairly standard in terms of the the fields and the variables that come and go through each specific step if you want to learn more about each a specific um, field, you can always just hover over it and it will give you extra description. Now in here, what we're going to do, is just create a new variable for the extraction results, put it in here so we can extract and use those results later on. The other thing that I'm going to do is just put that whenever no classification was found, then we're gonna say, for example, this is actually, the extraction is actually nothing. Because there was no specific classification, the other extraction has to be nothing. Inside of the data extraction scope, we have to enable a way to actually extract the information. I'm just gonna pick the regex based extractor because it's pretty straightforward and easy to implement. And inside of here, the first one that we have to do is enable that specific field. So you can see there that it's asking you to actually enable the field you must be able to extract information for every field for the document understanding framework to work. At least one extractor has to be enabled for each specific field. So in here, you can put any sort of rejects. I just left it blank. And then after I configure my expressions, I can go and configure extractors. And this is just enabling that part so that it extracts that specific field from that regular expression extractor. In the next video, we're going to see how the, do the different extractors work. This is just to set up and have that ready to go. Now, in here, we're just going to basically add the same information, the same paths, but also extracting one more part. And the difference between this specific step and the other ones is that the validation station or percent validation station activity will enable you to bring in a user into your process. And this is the attended part of the workflow. 
However, remember that you do not always need this validation station. This is only when the document has a low confidence level. I'm just including in here so we have a nice and steady stream of activities and you can configure that as you need. So the next part that we have in here is a train classifier scope. And this is going to be similar to the classifier document classifier scope that we saw before. The first thing that I need to do is actually uh, put the keyword JSON. And actually, this is wrong. Uh, I did the same mistake, I think. So the first thing in here is going to be the document path. We want to know the document path of the file that we're reading. And the second thing is the path of the JSON that has all the key keywords and classifiers. So that's also going to be enabled. We have to put one, at least one, which we did earlier, and then we have to enable the trainer. So remember to enable it, otherwise it will not work. Then we go in the right in the configuration and properties panel, and we enter the information that we entered before. Again, pretty standard across all, all of the ones that we saw. In the human validated data, we actually put the, the information that came from the validation station. The last part that we're going to do here is actually extract the results. Because the validation station really has a lot of information, we want to just extract the text. So this is the activity that we're going to use for just that. You might think that, hold on a second, why didn't we have just a straight up text from the validation station? And the answer is that the validation station provides much more than just a text. It also has information about what the user did for that specific step or for that specific learning or validation. The next thing that we're going to do is actually just go through all the results that were exported. And what I'm going to put here is basically the information that came out of the extract result activity. And in this part, I'm going to go ahead and pick the data that we extracted. And we're going to cycle through all the different tables that are inside of that ex exported result object. And just remember that there's really a lot of information in that exp in those exported results, but we just only need the tables. So I'm going to put confirm data dot tables, and then we're going to change the type of the argument to data table, which is the same type of value that we want to extract. And uh, the next step and last step for this specific video is going to be dumping or putting all of that data in a way that is easy to read. You can really use this data in any shape or form you want in a workflow, or you can just put it in a database or an Excel. In this case, I just put it into an Excel. So after this, our whole setup has been complete. And I hope this video helped you in how to set up your initial framework. For more information on the other extractors, please watch the second video. Thanks.